third year in a row, I made a painting for the Conference of Writer Physicians of Chile. The writer physicians are actually not just physicians, but several healthcare professionals who dabble in literature, and every year they gather to show their literary works, poetry and narrative in the conference. They even have several friends from other places in Latin America who regularly attend the Chilean conference. The thing is that for this year, 2019, instead of the traditional muse, which is a female figure, I was asked to paint a couple. I also decided not to use computational models as I had done previously, but real models of flesh and bone, and to build the whole painting in a more traditional way. Thanks to my attendance to the figure drawing workshop at the Aldea del Encuentro, the meeting village in the commune of La Reina, in Santiago, I met the models I collaborated with to make the painting. Indeed, it was the director of the workshop, artist Ernesto Diaz, who suggested me, before a session, to include the universal symbol of medicine, Asclepius' staff and the snake. While driving home after that session, I had the idea for the final concept, that medicine is the inspiration for literature, and the venom of the snake is the ink that the stories are written with, and I started drawing the studies. Now, this means that for the final painting, I needed the props, the feather quill, the ink bottle, the staff, and the snake. In the village, I found a wood stick, and our beloved Dr. Laura Caballero facilitated the quill, the ink bottle, and the plush snake that belongs to her grandson. Later, we scheduled the session with models Nina Calderon and Alvaro Valdivia. We left a lot in the session, and in a short while, we got around to the correct pose. After that, with a little Photoshop, I managed to build the definitive reference. I still had to replace a plush snake for a real one. After reading a lot about snakes, I decided that the snake in my painting would be a common viper, Vipera veruslini. After downloading several photos, I made a paper study of how I wanted it to look like. The painting was done in oils, not on canvas, but on an aluminum composite panel, which is one of the latest innovations to ensure the durability of the works of art. After priming the surface with the appropriate medium, I was ready to paint. The first thing I did was to start drawing the contours using a grid, which I later reinforced with fast drying paint so I wouldn't lose the drawing. Then I started the blocking in phase, which is the first layer of paint. In this phase, only the thick shapes of colors are laid in, without any detail. Here I used fast drying orchid paint in order to progress quickly towards the upper layers. In an attempt to pursue best painting practice, I did not dilute the solvent, but I only dragged the paint trying to cover the entire panel, only doing a first approach to the final colors. The following phase is the modeling phase, the longest and most intensive one. I always start by the background. I use mainly the so-called Mars colors, iron oxides, which are of the highest permanence besides ultramarine blue, bone black and lead white. In this stage, most of the painting is built, tuning up shapes and values.
The final phase of the painting is the details and corrections. Here I reach the final values, especially the darkest ones, and I add the colors that I was lacking, which are incorporated as glazings. I also refine the shapes that I had left incomplete. After about a month and a half of work, I can finally put my signature on. <laughs> 